This is the Bevy examples repo that I started in Bevy 0.8 when the material APIs first got introduced. They were really exciting, and I then built out a bunch of different examples, which are all in this folder, using these shader APIs over the next couple versions. Here we can see a bunch of the screenshots, such as this cube that's just colored in different ways, this orb, which I actually have an idea for updating already, and some other examples. Which examples have screenshots is kind of arbitrary, and I'd like to fix that. So the first place to start is Bevy Shader Utils. Bevy Shader Utils is a plugin that I wrote to support all of these examples, and it provides different kinds of shader functions. For example, it has Perlin Noise 2D and 3D, Simplex Noise 2D and 3D, and then something called Voro Noise. So I wanna make it easier to screenshot and test the output of these WGSL scripts and these materials. So I wrote this application in Bevy, which you can see at the bottom left here, and each of these examples comes with a shader. So on the right-hand side here, you can see that I'm importing from Bevy Shader Utils, Perlin Noise 2D, the Perlin Noise 2D function, because shader imports in Bevy now are modularized and you can bring in specific functions. I actually just realized the scale variable is no longer necessary because we're bringing that in from the material itself. So this makes it easier to take screenshots of all of the 2D and 3D sort of materials and scripts. So here we've got Perlin 2D, Perlin 3D is something I'll talk about in a second, Simplex 2D, Voro Noise in four different configurations. Voro Noise takes some configuration in the form of two F32s from zero to one. And you can see those being passed in here. Those configure it to work in different ways. So in this case, we have kind of rougher, more irregular shaped tiles. We've got sort of the blurry version of that. We've got square tiles, and then we've got the blurry version of that. And if I hit space, then we get screenshots using the screenshot manager, which is a fantastic API in Bevy these days. And it just dumps into the screenshots and that's that. So it's much easier to make changes to these WGSL materials and the functions that power the noise behind them. Now this is built out as an example in the Bevy Shader Utils crate. And there's one downside that I haven't gotten around to fixing yet. And that's that I have to comment out the 3D and 2D camera bundles whenever I want to show either the 2D or the 3D examples. So now you can see the 2Ds are grayed out because there's no TV camera, but the 3D Perlin noise shows up as does the Simplex 3D. Now, one of the reasons I got around to all of this is because there's a bug in the Perlin 3D noise. You can see that if you multiply the Perlin noise 3D by some scale on some world position, in this case, I think I multiply it by five. No, I multiply it by 50, which probably makes it harder to see, but there's stripes in the, uh, like effectively the Z axis. Or no, it is five. I was looking at the 2D. <laughs> so this is a 2X sized cube, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's a two X sized cube scaled at five. So there should be 10 stripes here and there are. So need to fix that. And this example is going to help me do that more easily and check my work. The example itself is fairly straightforward. We add a bunch of plugins, most of which are material plugins. So this whole chunk below the default plugins is all of the different materials that each have a WGSL script associated with them and either show a 2D variant or a 3D variant of the noise just patterned onto either a plane or a cube. Of course, to use the Shader Utils plugin, you have to add the plugin to your app. Otherwise, the shaders don't get pulled in. And we've got the new method for adding systems to Bevy. We've got add systems, startup, setup, and add systems update, and then a tuple. Really love these changes. These are from the stageless changes and actually from the continuing work on top of the stageless changes. Then we've got a resource that is a set of examples. So I store a list of all of the entities, which are all of the planes and cubes that each have materials associated with them. This example navigation is a bevy system that takes a bunch of stuff, most importantly, the examples, um, as well as some text that I've tagged with example name. And if you hit left, it moves the index, which is a local state variable for which example we're showing negative one and wraps around. And if you hit right, it adds one and doesn't wrap around because I got lazy for Every entity in all of the examples, we insert the visibility hidden component, so it hides everything. Then we take the one that we're supposed to display out of the index and add the visible component to it so that it shows. That's what makes the left and right navigation work in this example. And then finally, if I've set a name component on this entity, uh, which we're getting via the names query, you can just dot get on a query using it like a database uh, keyed by the entity ID, which is super dope. We iterate all over anything that we might have there and set all of the text sections to the name. And that's why in the bottom left here, we get the name associated with each of the examples. Screenshot on spacebar is basically taken almost exactly from the screenshot 
example in the bevy examples repo and i don't know that i even actually needed to do that because this is so easy to use basically we've got a screenshot manager right and you have to pass the window that you want to screenshot and the path that you want to write the image out to it could not be easier to take a screenshot in bevy this is fantastic um, i actually no longer need this counter variable from their example so i'll delete that but basically every time you press space inside of this we write out using the name so the name text here because everything is despawned, there will only be one of them. So we get dot single because we don't have multiple examples running at the same time. So single will panic if we do run two examples in the future, but I'm fine with that. And then we take that path. We say screenshot the current window and we get a screenshot of the current window. Looks like this. <laughs> super, super easy. I love this. Absolutely love this. We'll be including this in all of my games in the future. So nice. Then we come to our scene setup which is the only other system that we have running. We have the assets database effectively for every individual material. And if it's 2D, we get a material mesh 2D bundle that we spawn in. We spawn it in with some quad, spawn it in with some transform. In this case, we're scaling it. And then we spawn it in the material that we actually wanna show. In this case, it's the 2D Perlin material. Then we get the ID and we push the ID into that entities array or VEC. I guess it's not an array in Rust. <laughs> And we basically do that over and over and over. We do that like six times, seven times, something like that for all the examples. But it's the same thing over and over. And then once we have that entities vec, uh, we wrap it in examples so that we can query it later and we insert the resource. This is what allows us to fetch this later. It's also important to note that when we do query it, it's queried as an option. So that resource isn't, or it doesn't exist until it's initialized and we only initialize it in that system. So I set this as an option. I probably could just iterate over it, but I decided not to. So let me get the text at the top here. Press spacebar to save a screenshot to disk. Just absolutely positioned text right at the top. Bevy has default fonts now, which is super dope because we don't need to bring in any custom fonts. Although I might do that in the future just for kicks. And then we set up an empty text bundle at the bottom left here uh, and tag it with the example name component so that we can find it later and fill it out. Setting up all of the materials is super simple as well. If you're familiar with setting up materials at all, it's literally just a fragment shader for all of these. So it's material 2D for the 2D materials and a pointer to the relevant WGSL script in the shaders directory. And then we derive stuff. <laughs> as bind group type UUID debug clone and reflect. I did reflect here instead of type path because I wanted to use it with Bevy Inspector E GUI. So technically this does work. So if we go to the Perlin 3D example and we look at the uh, handle to the material that we're using, unfortunately, uh, I don't know how to name this. So if you have multiple materials, you end up with handle and then like this weird gobbledygook for the ID, uh, but you do get the variables. So I can scale this. And if I move this window out of the way far enough, uh, you can see it scaling in different ways. So this is positive, getting higher and higher and higher. Those example gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And if we bring it down to something small, you can start to see the issue with the Perlin 3D. At small multiples, um, these lines start to develop. So here we're at a scale of two, uh, the cube size is two. So we should see about one, two, three, four stripes. And that is correct. So that's the issue with the Perlin 3D. And it's now easy for me to check small multiples, large multiples, whatever I want to do with any of these. Now I do, of course, because this is just an example that I cooked up in like less than a day, uh, you have to comment <laughs> the asset inspector plugin for all of these materials up and down. But that's why all of these are deriving reflect because the uh, Bevy Inspector eGUI plugin for the asset inspector uses the reflect trait. So we've got scale on every material. Every material points to a WGSL script. Scale is, you know, something that applies to all of them. So how how much are you going to multiply or effectively divide your noise by? And then some of them have actual like additional, so X and Y for Veronize. And that's it. Um, the example, super useful for me. I still have to set up the Fresnel material. There's two functions in the Fresnel material. I also have to do uh, some readme stuff. So the first thing that I actually want to do today is to enable the cameras. So I've got two ideas for this. I can either specify the camera to be used with the example. So instead of examples here, we would have a tuple of some enum that either says 2D or 3D, and we would bootstrap either a 2D or a 3D camera, depending. I kind of like that idea. So I think it's what we'll go with. So let's take these cameras out. And where do we have to put these then? I guess this example should really only be running <laughs> uh, when we make a key change. Er, okay. 
Notice I automatically set the first example divisible here. So we would also have to set up the 2D camera bundle by default. So let's make this a tuple and let's make this active camera. So we'll make a struct there, copy this stuff again, delete the 3D camera. Uh, active camera doesn't exist, so we need struct active active camera. And we need to derive component on that because we're inserting it as a component when we spawn. And then I locked the current example index to the example navigation. So we have to handle the camera in here as well. So this will be something like match what examples dot zero. Um, I guess we make this a struct <laughs> instead of trying to just tupleize everything uh, and forgetting. So this will be camera type and then this will be camera type 2D and camera type 3D. So in the future, we could take this and we could make it like more configurable. So we could make sure each camera actually gets a specific kind of setup or additional components set on it. Now, none of this exists. So this will be enum camera type 2D and 3D. Um, I guess these are capitals and they can't start with numbers, can they? Is that our issue? Let's let's run and check. Yada, yada, yada. Redefined here. Yeah, identifiers can't start with a number. So confirmed. So let's do uh, 2D and 3D maybe. So I don't think we're inserting this anywhere. So we don't actually need to derive anything on it. We do need to go back down here and do 2D and 3D. Uh, we need to define this struct, whatever the struct is going to be. So we'll struct example. Camera type is a camera type. Entity is an entity. And then we stick example in this vec instead of entity. And I don't think we need to derive resource for it because I don't think resource propagate like that. So we've got entity to display. So this is going to be dot entity. This is going to be example dot entity. Uh, or maybe not. Did I mess that up? It is an example reference. Expected back example found back entity. Is that because I typed it up here? Nope, that should work. Oh, because all of my pushes are now wrong too. Um, and then bevy entity cannot be dereferenced. So we do this example dot entity, and then we're good. I think for at least the camera navigation, uh, make sure that the 3d camera also has the active camera on it, which I don't think it does at the moment. So camera bundle and then active camera. And we just like delete active camera, do something like query for all the active cameras. Maybe and this will be an entity with active camera, which means that active cameras dot iter. And this will just be a list of entities, right? For entity in commands dot entity, entity dot despawn recursive to turn everything off for that camera. And then we instantiate the new camera. And that leaves us with all of these pushes. These pushes need to now be um, an example. So example, fill struct fields, it'll be this. I guess I don't need the underscore if I'm doing it like this, do I? Why did I use the underscore? Let's change that to underscore D and 3D. I guess I do want the underscore. The underscore, it's weird to read without the underscore because it's going to be full caps. And then we've got our entity here. So then we just need to copy this part and remember after what ID is where the curly brace goes. Okay, and that should work for everything here. So let's do here. And this is a cube, so it's going to be 3D. And we'll close that. And this is a 2D. And then we close that. And this is a 3D. And we close it. The wonders of software maintenance. Doing this 50 million times. Okay, I've fully broken Rust Analyzer with that nesting. But I don't care right now. Let's see if this runs. If I forgot anything. Okay, that's the 2D. There's the 3D, 2D, 3D. Okay, so we're good. So now we can go back and forth between 2D and 3D examples as long as they're properly labeled. I'll try to run Cargo Nightly Format. Perfect. Oh, did I do it on everything though? I just did that on the entire repo. Rip. Okay, well, I just won't uh I just won't commit anything else. That's why you save your commits before you format stuff. Okay, so we've got the cameras working. Why are these warning? Oh, because I messed up. I do want it to be like this. Okay, so let's take 2D, select everything with Command D because I'm on Mac and we go 2D. Let me select these, do 3D, and that works much better for us. And then we get rid of the warning. So this syntax, this all uppercase like screaming snake case is only for consts. Uh, so enums are conventionally upper camel case. Cool. So that all works. Got to be a little bit cautious about what I add here because I've got some changes that I don't want to commit. I think we're good there. And we'll make a message enable cameras for all examples and we'll push that up. 
And then I'm gonna snag one of these. Which one am I using here? Is this Perlin Noise 3? Let's do a Simplex Noise 3 and we'll copy this out. I'm just updating the README now. Uh, it does have some old code in it. So I wanna make sure that the uh, examples are all correct. Voro Noise 2D is not what I called this anymore. I just called this Voro Noise because I don't think there is a 3D version or at least I didn't implement one. So let's get rid of the fractal Brownian motion uh, specifically because I think that there's no actual way to implement that in WGSL. It doesn't have higher order functions. So the only way to do fractal Brownian motion is to do it for each of the noise individually. So we would have to have Perlin noise FBM or simplex noise FBM, et cetera. I think that's good. I chose one big example. I guess I should also include the material for the simplex noise. Go into the readme, the above shaders used by a material defined as such. We'll do rust. We'll paste our material here. And I think we're good. I think we can do the update now. Uh, we do have to bump this to 5.1 because there is a new Perlin Noise 2D implementation. So I'll CD into this directory. We want the cargo toml and the readme, but I don't think uh, I don't think we need anything else. So git commit, bump version, and then cargo publish should work for us. Oh yeah, okay. So let's get stash, which cleans up our directory. Uh, let's push this up and then run cargo publish. Uh, if we scroll up while this is compiling, we see a couple of warnings. I don't think crossbeam channel or NDK sys are things that we are using. I'm kind of publishing a crate from inside of a workspace right now. So manifest has no documentation, homepage or repository. Did I mess up the cargo toml? I did. We might have to do a patch release. Okay, so it is allegedly available. And unfortunately it's not using our readme uh, regardless. So really I need to add a little bit more documentation here in general. Path to the readme is definitely what we need here. What else were we warned about? Manifest has no documentation, homepage or repository. I guess the repository as well, right? We'll take the homepage as well. Uh, I don't have a homepage for it. So we're just gonna send it to a deeper route inside of the repo. So that should all work. And then this needs to bump to 5.2. Check our changes here, cargo lock only has the version and then cargo toml has what we need. Plugin itself should get a bit of documentation as well. So where is that? All right, so to use the shader utility functions, add the plugin to your app and then an example and import the relevant function in your shader and then an example and that should be okay. So let's cargo publish that and we're good. And now Bevy Shader Util 0.5.2 is out. It has, oh, I need to, you know, the bindings are good. Has some documentation. You can basically copy and paste, has some uh, references for like what Voro noise is and why you would want it. And it looks like we're at number 14 in the build queue right now. So I'm just going to call it there. And the documentation should be up by the time you watch this video. So that's it. The Bevy Shader Utils are up to date and the examples are next. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.